Ultimately, it depends on what it is you're going to say. Because if it's something that's an inch instrumental to the investigation, it can't really be off the record because yeah. I mean, we're trying to solve a guy's homicide here. I know. It's hearsay. It's tertiary hearsay. I don't know if that's useful to you. I'll, yeah. I'll tell you something. I mean, somebody told me. Somebody else told yeah, me. Yeah, I mean, and you'd have to tell me what it was, and I would have to say, okay, is this something that can be excluded from the report, or is it something that's inculpatory? Is it something that's... Maybe I can just make it simpler than that. Maybe I can just say, I would be investigating Charlie Adelson. Okay. Maybe it's that simple. What, what makes you say that? Um, and, again, and, and here's another thing. We're talking to a lot of people sure here. Sure you are. Sure you are. And, you know, you're you're just telling us what you think. Sure. And everybody else is doing the same thing. Of course. Thing. I don't and that's right. okay. Yeah. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. What we're trying to do is just get all the puzzle pieces before we start trying to put the puzzle together. Yeah. We're still in the stages of getting all the pieces. I got you. I got you. So why do you think it would be pertinent for us to investigate Charlie. He's very angry about Danny. And if you met, I know he's down there, you can't get him in front of you, but you're you know, an experienced investigator. If you got in front of this guy, he'd set off your radar, set off mine. I used to do juvenile justice, I used to do forensic psychiatry. He set off my radar a little bit. He's a weird guy. Strange mm -hmm. guy, he's a conduct disorder kid. And he hates Danny. See if I can put it a little vaguely, or not. But this enough to be useful here. Um, well, let's not put it vague. Let's let's go with what you know specifically. Wendy had reported to me that Charlie had considered all the options possible to take care of this problem. Let's put it that way. Okay. And uh, and, it, and when she said it, when did she disclose this to you? I don't remember when, but she said this is. It was chilling because she said, can I tell you something confidentially? And I said, sure. She said, I think Charlie kind of looked into some options, like literally saw how, how and why and how you would do this if you did it. I think this was, and this was last summer when she had a petition to locate, relocate, denied. That family wants her back there so bad. And this is when she disclosed this to you was last summer? No, no, no. This is when uh, this, this is when and Charlie, he, had, Charlie had been examining all the options. Okay. He uh, he's a very successful dentist, but he reeks of antisocial behavior. Now I could be hundred percent wrong, but I wouldn't want to miss that if I was investigating it. He's got a close friend who's a special ex special forces guy, like a Navy SEAL or something. He's out with all the time. Um, what did she say to you specifically? I mean, when you she say said, all she, options, she, she, she said, uh, "Char." I can't remember exactly, but it had something to do with the amount of money it would cost to have someone killed. And what did she say? Something like Charlie looked into how much it would cost to have someone killed. Something yeah. like that. Some statement like that. I can't did, remember. did she give you a dollar amount? No. Did she? Uh, but that's the other thing. Um, he uh, he's a dentist, but he's an independent businessman. He has a bunch of practices, and he has a Ferrari, and he has a millionaire, all this kind of stuff. So he has a lot of resources. And uh, wow, this might screw them. Um, I got a. F from me talking to him myself in the hot tub one time, I remember a few things Wendy said. When was this? Um, like March 15th-ish, I was there for the one day with him. I was staying at his house. Of this year? Yes. Um, Wendy and him were talking, I'm just listening. I just met him an hour earlier, we were sitting in the hot tub having a beer. This is a really nice house. and. Uh, I guess this is what occurred. Was anybody else in the, in the hot tub with you guys? Not during this part of the conversation. Uh, another guy, his roommate came in eventually and then just turned to talk about girls and stuff like that. But, um, and I'm not trying to play cop here, but I do know one thing you'd be looking for is a lump sum of money moving around and some kind of crazy stuff happened. And I think there's a lot of financial irregularities. I think there's a lot of uh, you know, tax fraud kind of stuff of putting stuff in different people's names and moving money around and there might be cat. I don't know exactly what, but He's not doing anything on the up and up in his finances. It was pretty clear. He was pretty open about that. So I thought about it. If you guys do look into it, I don't know that. 
What have the exact conversation in the hot tub go? He was just talking about, you know, I put that in dad's name, I put that in mom's name, and it was just clear that... Hiding resources? Yeah, yeah. Monetary resources? Yeah, yeah. So if you have to do an investigation, that's something you guys should know, because I think there's a lot of... I don't know if it's illegal, but I know there's a lot of... Uh, he plays the system, you know. I mean, this guy is so inappropriate, we're sitting... Please don't write this down, but... <laughs> he's so inappropriate, we're sitting in the, in the hot tub, and he starts talking about sex acts with his girlfriend that he did to punish her for bad behavior in front of his sister. I'm like, this is the, and I didn't know what to do. I just met him, I talked with my girlfriend. This is just so, so weird, you know? It's like this guy's, his social radar is way off. His sense of right or wrong, just norm, norms is just off. He said off my radar. Now, I don't know if he did this, but if you're looking at somebody, don't miss him. And I could also see him doing this without ever telling Wendy he didn't do it. I can see Wendy being innocent, puzzled, and Charlie did. I can totally see that scenario. He's very protective of her. I think that's more likely than a, a romantic. All the romantic couplings are with highly educated, high elite status men. You don't want to throw that away. I've got a lot to lose. I mean, I don't. She doesn't slum that I know of at all. She doesn't. Well, I mean. This Charlie guy's a mil millionaire by your own admission. So. Yes. Well, he is. Uh, he's got this buddy. He's got a lot to lose. He does. He does. He's also uh, really cocky and arrogant and narcissistic. So, <coughs> I wish you had him in front of you because I think he'd set off your alarm bells. Um, that doesn't mean he did it, but uh, he's aggressive. He's argumentative. Self focused on himself completely. He's got three girlfriends at a time, which some people do that, I know, but no qualms about it, you know. So you think he may be good for it? Assuming this isn't a botched burglary or something like that, he's the first, he probably popped into my head within 20 seconds of hearing this. I mean, there's all kinds of, just to give you some context that may be helpful, last summer when they were trying to figure out how to manipulate this divorce or work the divorce, I guess, so they could get, you know, you know, it's a bad, bad fight, all this kind of stuff. They were talking about Wendy converting the kids to Christianity just to annoy Danny. <laughs> I mean, this has been a pitched battle, you know, I mean, um, we fed the kids bacon regularly, he tries to keep them kosher, there's all kinds of passive things of shit going on here, you know. So, uh, the family is, uh, family is important that you know this, actually, man. The family is so unhealthily enmeshed, so completely enmeshed, that Wendy is not really an adult. When she drives to South Florida, every single time those two parents drive up here and drive with her down. They don't trust her to drive from Tallahassee to Miami. They're just, it's not a normal family. It's not like she's a 35 year old and has two kids and come down to see us. It's complete enmeshment. It's a matter of they didn't pantalize her. She's considered the baby still. She's 35 years old. Charlie protects her. So it just, I don't know if this, this could be a bizarre fantasy. I know you guys are hearing all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I hope to God it wasn't Charlie, honestly, but uh, that's what popped into my head. So. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm so sorry. You're that's okay. Fine. I got stuff happening. <laughs> I just spit it all out. So you did you really? You the okay. Words. All right. Thank you. Who did it? <laughs> He, he's he's thinking, uh, you know, uh, her brother Charlie could be a viable suspect. I mean, I don't know if we've ruled him out or not. Nobody's ruled out. I don't think Charlie. Would, I, would, I don't think Charlie would have done it, by the way. But uh, he's one of these. He's a real rich guy, but he's got friends on both sides of the tracks, and uh, he's real street smart. He's always trading and stuff like that. And got this buddy that's in the special forces, and so he's like a dentist, but he's hanging out with guys that are different social class actually, and kind of antisocial, impulsive, angry, fiercely protective of Wendy. And I've heard him say I like to kill that motherfucker. I mean, I've heard him say that so many times. Now, I've said that out loud, too, and I didn't do it. You know, but um, there's something different about Charlie. He reminds me of, like, an antisocial. Charlie's an older brother? Yeah. She's the baby girl? She's the baby girl. Uh, is Charlie older or younger than this one up in Albany? He's the, he's the middle kid, I think. Charlie is? Yeah. If you had him in front of you, he'd set off your alarm bells. 
Okay. Doesn't, doesn't mean he did it, but no, I, I know that. But yeah. why? Okay, well, all right. So you're basically saying out of what's his name up in Albany? Yeah, Rob. That, no way, Rob. No way. He's the oldest. Yeah, he's the oldest. Yeah. Out of Charlie, mom, dad. Who else is there? Uh, it's just Charlie, mom, dad. That, down oh, there. That's okay. it. That's it. All right. Out, out of those three, you're saying Charlie would be would be the most volatile to do something. What would he do? He'd get his buddy in the special forces to do this, or he'd get some uh, CD guys down in the Cuban neighborhood, or something like that. That's what he would do. Something like that. I mean, I, I, the main thing I told him was that Wendy had told me that he had looked into how much it would cost last summer. Wendy told you that? She did. That Charlie had looked into how much it would cost? Yeah. So. And she said it in a dead serious chilling, uncomfortable kind of way. Not like I joke around, I like to kill Dan Markell, I'm sick of his shit, that's different. You know, this was like, she said confidentially. Okay, she just, you and her, one-on-one? One-on-one, -on -one, late at night, and uh... What'd you suppose that last it was late. It was late at night, and uh, she, uh, she told me that, so... Uh, it was last summer when her petition to relocate was about to be denied. Oh, because she and, wanted to take the kids out? Well, they want, they want her down there so bad, the family's so enmeshed, so tight, so unhealthy. She's like the baby. So, if you met Charlie, he's a uh, he's an unusual guy. Okay. No. So, so, so. If you just just so I understand, yeah, yeah. I don't and misinterpret. Yeah. What exactly? How did she say it, and what did she exactly say? Yeah, and I'm pulling up from memory. Pulling up from memory, but something like I, I said. We're also talking about us, because I was like, would you ever leave under any circumstances? Yeah, I know you don't love it here. Am I going to be dating you for two years and you just move? She's like, I can't. You know, I can't because of Danny. And she said, yeah, I, as a matter of fact, something about it would be convenient if Danny wasn't around anymore, but, you know, he doesn't want anything to happen to him or something like that. She said, but Charlie actually looked into like, how that would be done and how much it would cost. She might have said, I think, Charlie. I don't remember. But it was chilling. In the moment, I was like, my stomach flipped. I was like, whoa. The crux of the statement is my brother Charlie has looked into how much it would cost to take care of somebody. Yeah. Take care of somebody. Okay. Right. This guy has very little empathy. He's just a weird guy. Okay. Um, I'm uh, not saying he did it. I'm just saying if you're looking at somebody, you can't miss Charlie. I mean, okay. I think that's more likely than a romantic thing. Well, that's you. Yeah, it's not me. The other guy's gone. Zach, wherever yeah, he's, he's gone. She's gone to and by the way, turn out, make sure that she saw Zach once a week for 20 minutes of sex. I don't know the relationship, you know. I don't think he gives a right. shit about Wendy, so I don't know. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Size. Yep. Wait. I don't have time for her. Um. I said, great. Okay. spring break for FSU kids. Okay. So helping out the farm workers and stuff. Okay. Um, so we just we spent a night in the hot tub with Charlie and that was it. Uh, but I've always told him, I've always suspected that, and I could, I'm the paranoid ex-boyfriend, so right, but uh, she goes to South Florida an awful lot. <coughs> okay. She's always a little weird when she comes back romantically and stuff like that. So I just, 
so I was kind of suspected. So I wouldn't. Obviously, the connection is now she can go to South Florida. Right. I mean, no, we 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 see that part. Yeah. Um, who's this uh, Green Beret? Did you say? And that I don't know. I don't know anything about this guy. I just know that uh, on Facebook there's a lot of pictures of him, and Wendy's told me stories about him. He's. Uh, I guess the point is that Charlie doesn't just hang out with other dentists. He hangs out with. Uh, all kinds of people, so it's not like he's some snobby dentist that's not gonna hang no, out. No, no, no. Hang out this guy did five years in Afghanistan, so it just popped into my head. Like, Charlie no, did? No, no, Charlie's friend did. Did Charlie was Charlie in the military? Nah, nah, he's a dentist. He's a dentist. So, um, okay. But when Charlie talks, he talks about uh, a cross section of people. I mean, he has friends with all across the spectrum, including, you know. Some unsavory characters. Let's go back to the statement that she made. I just want to clarify yeah. the stuff. She's she tells you she goes, "Yeah, my brother, my brother." I, and I, I think the phone was going off. Yeah. My brother has checked, or my brother has something along those lines. Has 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 inquired as to how much it would cost. Something like that. I can't give you an exact quote. It might have been bad. I think Charlie. Here's an example. She, she might have said, "I think Charlie might have looked into how much it cost to actually have that done." You know, he's down there in Miami, where it's, you know, it's not unheard of. Okay. Something like that. All right. Um, it just across Charlie's mind. I, you need bottom line. It had not. It occurred to Charlie that was one way to take care of the problem. And he wants to help sis. He is fiercely protective of her. He wants her back in South Florida so bad. No family does. She never, you, know, you guys know the background? She never wanted to be here, ever. I mean, she came here with Markel. Um, they're supposed to be here a year and then move on. He had a job in Miami. He was an asshole, so he lost it. He said, no, I'll go back to FSU and stay there. They're stuck here. So he's doing great. He's the De Lombard, you know, Sandy Dillenberg professor of law and all that stuff. When he gets a shitty job that she doesn't really like, doesn't like the area, She's doing her best to make it work. She hates it. Never wanted to live here. Never thought she'd live here. This is all from her, right? Yeah, this is all straight from her. Are you kidding me? I'm her boyfriend trying to convince her this is a great place to stay. Get a new attitude. This is a daily conversation, you know? I'm like, I love to. I moved here on purpose, you know? Right. <laughs> so this is a daily conversation. Like, uh, look, wake up, it's pretty, you know? <laughs> you know? And her whole thing is, no, I don't, I still don't like Because I'm trying, I'm trying, but it's, you know, I never, I didn't choose it. Okay. I didn't choose it, and that makes it hard. I heard that daily. I didn't choose it, and that makes it hard. Okay. And she loves Miami. She just loves it. When we're down there, she just lights up. It's a whole different thing. Is it Miami or Fort Lauderdale? It's Coral Springs, but it's Miami. It's okay. Miami. It's Miami. Yeah. So, um, so a daily thing is you're trying to tell her how great this area is and so forth, and she's basically putting it down, and then, yeah. you know, I'm stuck here, my husband didn't want to, or couldn't keep the job at yeah. UM, he screwed it UM or Nova? It was, or U it, was, uh, it was UM, yeah, okay, yeah. And he screwed that up? Was that, was yeah, that yeah, he was so abrasive, I'm sure you heard a lot about that, he was so abrasive that, they're like, you're a great scholar, we don't want to put up with your butt every day, so get out of here, you know? Okay. I mean, he, he, he had to work pretty hard to lose that job, actually. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, what was the reason, I mean, I, I know that there was some type of contention, and, and I don't know if it was... The, the, the child rearing, or do you, do you know that? Um, I can tell you anything you want to know about that, or about every legal document that. <laughs> no, no, no. What did she personally tell you? Tell me about child rearing? Well, the reason for their divorce. How did oh. they, she get to this point? Oh, Danny was. Uh, give you a couple examples of Mark Kell. Um, they would drive from here to Miami as a family. Oh, this is before they had kids, even, but even as a family, both. Um, and Danny would work on his computer, he had one of those converters so he could plug your laptop in. Wendy was required to drive, and Wendy was required to not. That's okay. Sorry. Yes, sir. Say again. Okay. Do you have Couch's number? Yeah, I'm gonna have him. I'm busy right now. I'm gonna have him meet, and then I'm gonna talk to him when they're done downstairs or wherever they do the buckle. I'll. I'll uh, are, are you already on the second floor? Okay, just get, get couch. He's waiting for you. Thanks. Anyway, Markel's rule was, you may not speak from Tallahassee to Miami. From Tallahassee to Miami. And she said she would be like, Dick, shh, shh, I'm working. Just a total control freak, emotionally abusive, controlled the finances, just ran her shit. Just, and, and I don't know if he hit her or not, but I can tell you, if you just raise your voice to her like that, she flinches like she's got her ass kicked yesterday. 
So uh, I've wondered about violence. I don't know. Um, she says no, but people lie. Wendy lies a lot. Um, so he was pretty mean to her. And as she went to get married, every friend she had was begging her, don't marry this guy, he's the biggest asshole we've ever met. And she got caught up in the Harvard Law and elitism and all this kind of stuff. And she was in a bad place. Made a bad decision, got married to a guy. I just got divorced last year, so I understand. Like I oh, you did? I got married to the wrong woman, too, so I get it. That's how we bonded, actually. We took the wrong people before. Um, so she, it was a bad marriage from day one, I mean, pretty much, according to her, at least. And by the second year, it was awful. And then having kids will fix it. You know, people try that. So uh, he was also an absent father. I mean, he came home 9 o'clock every night, she claims, and that was play with the kids for 10 minutes. That was it. She did everything, kind of like a house slave oh. and then uh, when he went to go get divorced he tried to get 100% custody of the kids That's so if you read these legal documents that he's filed they'll keep, I don't know if you're him, but they give you insight into like he's pretty crazy he I haven't crazy. had the time but yeah. I will yeah it's a a lot of lunacy shines through um, but I'm sure he had his side of it too. I'm sure he did and I'm uh, well that's what I wonder about is with all the stuff I talked about with Wendy with me uh, I mean he was controlling well maybe he's trying to keep his wife in control I don't know you know right. um, but he, uh, you must have heard, he's not, don't want to speak ill of the dead. He wasn't well liked. It's bizarre to open up the paper and see all these comments about how a great guy he was. I know one person in my social circle. Oh, okay. Jewish okay. Stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. You're, you're hovering around. I'm, I'm an honorary Jew, I guess. Okay. I don't know what okay. they call me. Okay. Um, but I mean, I don't know the truth about their marriage, but I do know that it was really, really hard on Wendy. And when it got to the legal stuff, he was vicious. He was really vicious. So. Anything? Did she ever tell you anything? Uh, concerning any incidents when when uh, Danny and Charlie were together or Danny and any other family? I mean, was it kind of like, hey, you know, Dan, Danny, you sleep over here in the doghouse or something? You don't no, no, no. It was more like uh, the family hate. This is why she didn't introduce me to her parents. She said last time it was so awkward because it went so badly because they all hated Danny. Um, Charlie hated Danny. Her parents hated for, do you know why? Um, he is a, in person. He is so arrogant. He is so un, it was so unlikable. He would just talk down to people. He was one of these Harvard guys, okay. and it was just like when I met him in that awkward meeting. I was early. He was I was late. He was early, and we met for the first time. He insulted me three, four times in really? ten sentences, just in subtle like haughty, snobby kind of ways. Like, oh, are you a lawyer? You know, and, and just little comments here and there. You know. So he was passive aggressive about it. He wasn't in your face, he wasn't yelling, but he insulted. He would just tell you, say you're stupid. Okay. I mean, that's just how he talked. He thought he should have He's basically subtly insulting you the entire conversation. Yeah, yeah, he did. I mean, as far as uh, Wendy and him, he did all kinds of little things to intimidate her. I don't know if he knew he was doing it, but she was scared of him. I would go with her to tell him, I would go with her to functions that he was at to kind of reassure her and run interference because she would get heart palpitations and stuff around him. And it seemed completely out of the scope of normal. I got an ex-wife. I can get in front of her. Not a big deal. Right. Um, for her, it was like, will you please come with me to soccer practice or whatever it was? Oh, swim lessons two weeks, three weeks ago. Will you come with me to swim, swim lessons because Danny's going to be there. And it just, she would just freak out. Did you go? I did go. Was he there? Yeah, he was there. Was everything okay between you and him? Well, yeah, everything was fine. Um, we kind of moved through a phase where at first we were real friendly, shaking hands, and then we got like, hey, I'm not going to shake your hand. We're, we're on different sides of this thing, you know, that kind of thing. But it was always reasonably friendly. Did she introduce you to him as your boyfriend, your current boyfriend? No, no. Friend? I, I don't remember what she, she said. This is Jeff, I think. Okay. That was a point of contention between us. She didn't call me her boyfriend until very recently. So oh, okay. <laughs> I think she might have had other ones. I think that might have been an issue. Okay. Maybe Dan Zach was also her boyfriend. I don't know. Okay. okay. We already got his phone number. Yes. Is there anything else I can do? I mean, I just don't think it's... Uh, he did say he was willing to give Buckle if you need it or want it. Is that something you want to do? I can call him back. We have his phone number. Yeah. Let's take a second. Though. And the guy drives in from Georgia, Tennessee, whatever, and comes straight here from what I understand, what you told me. Yeah, I didn't do it. <laughs> I, I, 
I guess the thing that keeps popping up in my head is how don't write this down, but just so you know if you're investing in, I've been shocked how easily Lindy lies to my face. I've been dating 25 years, I'm not an experienced man out there, but her and Charlie both have this sociopathic kind of thing where it doesn't seem to bug them at all. So if you had her in front of you for nine hours. Are her parents uh, from the United States? They are. They're first generation. I think they're, their parents were Holocaust kind of things. So yeah. Yeah. And they're weird. But I don't have more time actually being involved. But they are strange people. Right. I mean, they right. in nine months of dating, they probably said twenty words to me. Okay. This is not coming up. Okay. I tell you what. Let's just do this. Okay. When you get your paper copies, okay. Send them to uh, Corey for me. I will. And then and then. But you can give me an email address. I can send them to you. Tonight. Either way. Yeah. Yeah. And then that way. My name, the contact number, we'll my emails on there as well. And all we basically are doing is we're substantiating. We do this with everybody. Yeah, You're not the first in this of case. Course. We're just substantiating. This was his whereabouts according to his financial records. Um, he was traveling. Um, he was not in town. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he's her former boyfriend, but this is where he was at according to his financial yeah. records. Of course. So um, that's all we basically want to do. And, and it's basically we eliminate, 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 and then we get down to who we're really looking at. Yeah, I got you. You understand this. Do. It's not. It's not brain surgery or anything, but um, I just, I'm trying to think of anything else I could ask you at this time, and I... I'd be wanting to come back. I just don't want to spend more time with Wendy if there's anything. Here's, yeah. a, here's another thing that I typically ask people. Is there anything that you didn't disclose that maybe we didn't ask that you think is of note or is important? Because a lot of times you've thought about this just as much as we have. That's I mean, you've got a whole trip that. to think yeah. about and yeah. analyze yeah. Yeah. all this stuff. Um, it's a pretty screwed up family. I mean, I mean like but I, I'm, I'm trying to, I, you know, everybody's probably in the same brainwave. For murder? Doesn't seem likely to me. Charles no, but I'm know. asking, I'm asking your opinion, not, not. I can see, I can't see the parents being involved. I got the email and I thought of Charlie within a couple moments. Okay. That's what I thought of. Charlie personally or Charlie hiring somebody? Hiring somebody. No way, Charlie. Would, no way. Can't? Wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do it. Couldn't pull the trigger? <coughs> well, I don't know about that. I don't know him that well. I was telling him I used to work juvenile justice a little bit in forensic right. psychiatry. He gave me the creeps. Um, but I could see him hiring. I could see him. You don't follow the rules, man. I mean, that's, that's how okay. he lives his life. He goes to South America, he sees prostitutes. I mean, he, he's got his, he does his own thing. He's not, is he married? No, he's got three girlfriends at all times. Okay. He rotates them and they don't know each other exists, and that's not a crime. Right. But the ease with which he did it was yeah. no empathy for other people. That's kind of a doing. deceitful person to start with? Sure. Uh, the whole family, really. Family, really. Okay. <laughs> right. And I, I just have this, I guess, everything that you didn't ask, and I said it before, I'll just say it one more time. I really. The, when I looked at that agenda, when I started poking around, when I started looking at my calendar and examining Wendy's behavior and all this kind of stuff, I don't, don't think Wendy would do this. I don't think she's capable in a way. I mean, um, but there could be people you don't even know about unless you investigate very closely, would be my guess, because there's some weird patterns of behavior when she's in South Florida. I don't know if you know how often she's gone there, but I have it on my calendar. And it is like 30, 40% of the time when she's not at work, she's like she's in South Florida. Where's the kids? Down there with her? Or well, like when Danny has them a week, she'll go, she'll take them with them, she'll drive. Okay. But it's like, it's a big problem in our relationship. Like when she's got time off and want to spend it with her, she's in South Florida. Um, so, I don't know. All right. When you think of anything else, just give me one sec. I don't um, And I even wonder about another guy in town. I mean, there's just been so much deceit that I wouldn't be shocked. I was telling him she has a lot of free time. He just four hours a week, other than that, she's on her own schedule. Okay. Well, yeah. that's enough for today. Okay, great. If there's uh, something else comes up, you know, give Corey a call. Or, I will. And, uh, we might have to call you back. Call uh, me back if you need me. Okay, buddy. Good to meet you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'll walk you down. Okay, great.
here. Okay. Where do you want me to sit, man? Uh, you can just sit right here, and I'll sit right here with you. I made a couple of notes. I've been thinking. Okay. Do you have a credit card? I do. The, the one that you sent yeah, me, the I email? I got it right here. Uh, can I just make a copy sure of that? Can. I, I'm not going to charge anything to your <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> but I just got to show you. can't trust the police to hold on to your credit card. Well, here's the thing. Uh, your account doesn't necessarily show that you are the account holder. There's nothing in, in that gotcha. correspondence. Gotcha, gotcha. So I'm just going to make a copy of this. And really what this is doing is just working to exclude you as a suspect. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I can ask you pretty much done that. Well, I thought so. I'm sure my cell phone records would show that, too. That's well, we, we just... I kind of showed this to my boss, and they're like, well, let's just go ahead and verify that he has this account number. Sure, gotcha. And you weren't locking on to somebody else. Yeah. Conspiracy right. th theory stuff, I know. Gotcha. But, well, no, um, you guys got to be careful. Yeah, we got to check everything out. Okay. So uh, I'll be right back. I'll, yeah, make sure. it, I'll make a copy of this, and then I'll come right back. Um, I just thought of a few things that might be useful to you. So okay. Yeah. Uh, got a million things going on here. Sure you do. Uh, And you now is this just kind of like theory kind of stuff, or um, is it just kind of you had some time to think about what yeah, I talked to you about? Yeah, actually, what it's been is I we had a 14-day break while she was in South Florida, and last seven days I haven't heard from her yet. So we're at day 22, 23, no longer under the spell. I'm starting to see a few things a little more clearly. Okay. Um, it's been a month since we were intimate, a month since we, you know she kind of controlled me that way. So it's uh, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm starting to clear up a little bit, man. I'm not under the spell. So there's just a, just some things I think you should know. I'll try to go quick. I know you're busy. But, okay. But uh, I appreciate you. First, there was two quick things. You probably already have these, but there's a professor in the department that's totally obsessed with her. You probably already got that. Who is that? Uh, he's got really bad teeth. I don't know his name. He called her goddess, and he would send her inappropriate texts. I can't imagine that Wendy wouldn't have mentioned that, but just to make sure you had it. Um, he's an older guy, probably in his 60s. I don't know his name, but he called her Goddess. And he's no fan of Markel. I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah. I haven't talked to him specifically, but yeah. it seems unlikely. But I figured you want everything. Okay. Um, and there was a this, this was one I thought of. Um, there was a student in the fall that was really inappropriate with her. She forwarded a couple of emails to me, and he actually kissed her on the mouth during a teacher-student meeting in her office. That was kind of weird. So I don't know his name or anything else, but there was the student that, if you're looking for obsession, that was strange for a student to lean in and kiss a professor on the mouth, you know? Yeah. yeah. So that's just, um, I, Wendy would know the name, she forwarded the email, she was disturbed, but I don't okay. know, you know. If you really needed it, I have that email somewhere. But, um, might have spent a cocky student trying to pick up his hot prof, I don't know, you know, but. If you can find it, just you got my email address. Yeah, just would you like to see that one? Okay, I'll sure. see yeah. that email. I think his address is on it. Um, yeah, and, uh, we haven't excluded anyone really at this point. Gotcha. So. Okay, a couple other things. Um, I've been seeing a therapist since about, uh, I don't have any major mental health problems, but just to try to deal with Wendy, I was seeing my therapist I used to see when I was going through my divorce. So, um, I was thinking about what we talked about in there. I mean, I've spent like $2,000 on therapy trying to figure out how to deal with Wendy. She's been really hard to handle. Um, and I realized I, I never put it together, but um, he for months has been concerned that she's a sociopath. And I didn't tell you guys that before. I, love, I still love Wendy. I was under her spell. She called me tomorrow. I'd probably go back to her. But there's a lot of stuff that, as I look back, it's really strange just to give you a couple examples. Well, I guess one of the things I worry about is Wendy has this public persona, and uh, she's a very good actress, and she's very charismatic, and all this kind of stuff. And, I, and, and she knows a lot of people. You know, everybody in Tallahassee knows Wendy. You probably discovered that already. I mean, she's in every social circle. You know, she's very social butterfly-esque and out there and stuff. 
But in terms of people that know her intimately, have spent like a lot of time with her and seen behind the curtain, you know, no. I think it's uh, Markel, me, and maybe that sack guy in the last 12, 13 years. I mean, she doesn't, you know, you know what I mean? So some of the stuff I had seen was pretty crazy stuff. I mean, no sense of guilt, no empathy, hypersensitivity to criticism. When I said, hey, you cheated, I mean, that's fucked up. She would not apologize. She would not say she felt bad. She would not say she made a mistake. Um, she's a total pathological liar, and I, I feel bad saying all this because I still love her. She has these flaws, and I would have stayed with her. But uh, if you look back at Mark Kelly's legal documents, he's constantly talking about her systematic pattern of deception, how she lies all the time. And she told me once, I have a really hard time telling the truth when it's inconvenient or unpleasant. I lie all the time. I mean, she said that to me. So I never would have thought that Wendy was, I know she didn't pull the trigger or anything like that. But the more I thought about it, how much I was manipulated, how much of a spell I was under, and all that kind of stuff, I feel kind of creeped out right now that, not, uh, I don't know if she's a suspect or not, the paper says she isn't, but as an accessory, it makes a lot of sense to me at a certain point. So, and I don't know that many people that, that know her that well. Mm -hmm. um, when you see behind the curtain, she's a total, total train wreck. Uh, my psychologist was saying, man, she just meets the checklist of a narcissistic sociopath, you know, go down the list. So, obviously she's already a person of interest and all that kind of stuff, but I thought you should know that my, I'm, I'm a mental health myself. I'm a, right. So, um, I never saw that when I was under the spell, but I've had people trying to convince me for three or four months, you're dating someone who has real severe sociopathic tendencies. Right. So, high functioning and attractive, but still, you know, that. Yeah. So that, that's something I just thought I should tell you. Sure. Well, I just noticed that Markel, everybody's told me what a nice guy Markel is, and I thought he was sadist, because in our household, I mean, he's a psychopathic, stalking, emotionally abusive, controlling jerk. That's how Wendy thinks of him. Now I know and, that, and, and that's her assessment of him. Yes. Do you have the same assessment of him? Um, I did when I was with her, because I didn't know, I just believed her. Right. You know, but uh, no one else has, what I hear from everybody else is he's an arrogant dick. As far as a academic, there's a lot of professors that are arrogant, you know. Sure. Um, but 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 he's a good man. That's what I hear people saying. He was right. a good father. He was a good man, and he was really upset with Wendy. Um, starting to understand why. I mean, there's some timing things here. I hope this is all wrong. And you find some disgruntled student that shot him. I didn't want Wendy and her kids to have a good life in South Florida. You know, I still love them. I still care about them. I miss them. I'm pretty heartbroken over all this, but want information I had some things to say um, so we have this big fight in Gainesville and I really confront her I'm really hard on her I'm, I'm pissed because I feel like I've been conned because I, you know, she's been calling me her boyfriend and all this kind of stuff and I don't know exactly what the relationship was with Zach but I found out enough that it was very clear that she was busted that she was juggling two guys in some form or fashion I don't know the details mm -hmm. I got the impression I was boyfriend number two is why I was pissed I mean there's not a, no picture on the Facebook page I noticed there wasn't even a picture of me in her house and that's when I got really really upset I was like this come on we've been dating nine months this is bizarre you know um, so I had it out with her in Gainesville and then she went to South Florida for 14 days <sighs> the whole time she's down there She's miserable and not that available. But we're talking about future-oriented stuff. We're talking about trying to get back together and desperate to see each other. It sucks that we're separated in this bad situation. And I can show you the text, like, can't imagine my life without you. God, I fucking miss you. I mean, these are like exact quotes, you know. Um, she gets back to town, we go on a date, and I said it was awkward, but we were holding each other, we're holding hands. There was a future orientation still. We're gonna spend a lot of time together and work this out. That's what we had decided to do. That was last Monday. It gets really strange from there, and it makes me suspicious, and maybe I'm just paranoid, but then on Tuesday, she called me at two or three in the afternoon. And she said, I'm walked out of my house, so we're gonna see each other that night. And I say, okay, I walked out of your house, what are you gonna do? I try to get a key, but I probably need a locksmith. I said, oh, well, I'll come out, and we'll just hang out on your front porch and have our date there. And she's like super sweet and friendly, and it was like everything was okay, actually. She was like, why would if you would come keep me company, see you in a little bit, call each other baby, this kind of stuff. Um, when I showed up to yoga, it, it ended up that she got into her house, we went to yoga together instead, and we just met there. When I showed up to yoga at seven, something was completely different. She was gone, I mean. And that might have been just her talking to her friend and says dump him and she decides it and that's it. I mean, it have nothing to do with your case. 
But I would be really curious to know if I was you, who she talked to between three and seven, because something happened where I seem to be irrelevant all of a sudden. And this has been after, this is after 15, 16 days mm -hmm. of her wanting us to, you know, let's just work this out. It just turned in a second. And then it gets a little stranger from there, actually. And this was Tuesday preceding the 18th? Exactly. Um, and you, so I'm never. At what point did she send you the email? I, that, that, I was that, that, that was that night. That was Tuesday night. That was Tuesday okay. night, which I suspect was already in her head. Because well, that may have been she may have came to a finalization that she was going to do that. She may have. She may have. I mean, I don't want to make this all about me. There's bigger things here. But I did notice some things. I mean, so she's done with me, right? Okay. I'm looking at her. It's not right. Something's wrong here. I walk out to the car, and it's really awkward. Small talk, you know. I can tell she thinks think she's done. But she asked me if I was going to be here this weekend. Now she's done. Why does she give a shit if I'm here Friday? She asked me directly, are you going to be here Friday? And I said, uh, maybe it's up in the air. And it wasn't up in the air. I just didn't want to seem desperate. And I was just going to stay here and not take my trip. If Wendy was willing to see me is what that was about. But she, said, I, but she was really interested. Oh, why is it up in the air? Oh, because, you know, at his end, there's a thing. Oh, okay, well, okay, talk to and you. And this was prior to her sending you the email? Prior to sending me the email. And the last thing I ever heard from Wendy, the last, thing, last words I exchanged with Wendy are, were, are you going to be here Friday? I just thought you should know that. It may mean nothing, but it was kind of strange to me. Then the no contact order was also kind of strange to mm -hmm. me. Um, usually you just send someone an email and say, hey, I need some time to think. She was very strict about that no contact thing. It was almost like she didn't want to be in front of me. You know, I just busted her for Well, she probably didn't want you to try and uh, talk her out of it. Maybe. I don't know. No, that was my thinking. Maybe. Or maybe she knew something was going to go down and I want me in front of her because I read her pretty well. And uh, I just busted her on a whole host of lies, you know. Okay. So it sounds crazy speculative. I just wanted to give you the information. Um, so that struck me as kind of strange. Oh, I don't know if you guys have seen this yet. This was just weird. This is just stuff. Have you seen this picture? Probably seen it in the media accounts. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at that picture, my friends that have, I don't have kids, my friends that have kids up and said, look how narcissistic that picture is. Who looks good in that picture? Not Wendy's kids. Wendy. And this comes out Thursday night. She changes this. Mm -hmm. This is the one that you said she was uh, taunting you with? Or well, maybe. Or well, 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 my other friend, what, what, the other speculation in the community, which is not for me, is like, it's Wendy looks good, but <laughs> this is a Photoshop picture. Her dad does photography stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. So she looks way better than normal in this picture. If you knew you were going to be all over the media, that's how Wendy would want to look. So that, may sound, uh, that, that may sound crazy to you, but just something to think about. I mean, when you want to picture your kids, your kids look good. She's got, there's other pictures in this photo set where the kids looking at the camera and are smiling and look great. Right. So it's just weird. Um, and I'm not trying to do your job for you to be like an yeah. FBI profiler, but it was a thing. Right. Um, and that, one of the last things would be, uh, it's still, I don't want to be the disgruntled ex-boyfriend, but it's really strange to me that she's never contacted me. It's very strange. We were co-parenting for six months. We've talked about Danny for hundreds of hours. No one knows that case better than, as far as her friends, than me. Um, it's really, really odd. I mean, your ex-wife and you are estranged, you're fighting, you're separated, her dad gets hit by a car, you pick up the phone and call, usually, you know? So there's a rigidity, rigidity to this no contact thing. It just strikes me as very, very odd. She is. I know you said, hey, I wouldn't take that personally. <coughs> I'm not taking it personally. We're done. I'm getting right. it, you know. But what I am taking it as is it almost looks guilty to me. It looks really strange. Why wouldn't you call for putting these kids to bed for the last six months? And then ride around in a minivan with them. I care about these kids. She knows that. Even if we're over, not a text message, not a phone call. It mm -hmm. looks strange to me. So. Right. And even more so in the recent. recent events. Well, that's what I mean, is that when that happened, I didn't expect to hear from her that day. You guys hit her on, you know, into the night. I know all that kind of stuff. But uh, I still haven't heard anything. Mm -hmm. That just is very, 
very strange. Maybe she's just a cold-blooded, damaged, needy woman that decided she was done with me, maybe. But if there's any interest in her at all, there's a lot of sociopathic stuff here, it seems like. Mm -hmm. The ease with which she lies is really disturbing. Mm -hmm. So that's all I had to say. I just thought you'd want to know that. Okay. Yeah, well, I got you here. I did want to run down on some of your, uh, I printed out your, uh, your stuff that you sent me here. Let me just yeah. get a flip to it and try and find it. Okay, and this actually is a little bit better to uh, kind of have something tangible to look at yeah, to, yeah. to kind of see where you are and what, where you were going and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, a little out of order because it wasn't cleared, but yeah. Okay, so this day's in was actually, even though it says the 18th, I talked to the clerk and she said you were there on the 17th. Yeah, Thursday, so Thursday, Thursday night. Thursday night, which Thursday is what you said. Yeah, yeah. You know, so... Um, this is mainly done for exclusionary purposes. I got it, I got it. I'm not worried. Um, so I got you here. And then when did this transaction occur? Like it doesn't have a time. Can you give me kind of more of a specific is that a time? About Thomasville? Yes. That would have been on the way there. So nine, ten o'clock. PM. Yeah. Do you remember what time you got into the days in? Before, before midnight. Okay. Um, what's like about it? I left here around eight. I wasn't going to drive past midnight. It might have been twelve fifteen or something. But uh, I went from here to South Atlanta. You know, average of seventy five or something like that. So. And then thirty seven dollars in gas. On Friday. And where's that at? At Ayersville, Georgia? Yeah, that would have been somewhere between Atlanta and Tennessee. And that was on, this was actually on Friday. It was. Okay, so even though this one says transaction date, it was close enough to the 18th that it may not have went through until after midnight. You know what, it might have been 12.05 when you pulled the trigger on it or something. Okay. Well, you just said anywhere between 12 and 12.15 you got there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm, and then you said you got out of here about nine o'clock. Yeah, it was about almost exactly nine. It just as a thought experiment, I would have stopped in front of a truck for this woman. Mm -hmm. I'm a mature forty-two year old guy who's dated a lot of women. I just got caught into the spell. So that combined with just the, uh, I think that's kind of unusual when you have two boyfriends. I think I think that takes a certain uh, lack of conscience. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that's how easily she did that. Mm -hmm. Just makes me wonder. Uh, I hope she's not involved at all. In yeah, I mean, I don't think she is, but I mean, time will tell. I don't think she'd be in, in directly involved, but as an accessory at this point, I gotta tell you, that's in my head. So I just wanted you to know that. I don't know. You know a lot more data than I do. Sure, think. yeah. Um, well, if you don't have anything else, nope, that's it. I appreciate you coming in. Sure. And um, if you wanna go ahead and send me that email, uh, if you still got it. Yeah, I'll find that email. And then, um, like I said, you got my email, you got my phone number. Anything else arises, let me know. If you do have subsequent contact with her yeah. and you guys have a conversation that you think is of note. I'll let you know. Yeah, well, I, think, know. I think we're probably done. I, you need anything from me, let me know, but that's all I had. So, okay. All right. Well, appreciate you coming in. Jeffrey or Jeff? Jeffrey. J-E-R-E-Y. J-F-F-R-E-Y. 
And it's L A C A S S E. Let me get your date of birth, Jeff. Sure, 101871. Okay, um, so what's up? You got, you, uh, Corey said, and we talked on the phone a little bit yeah, that yeah. You, um, you wanted to, and yeah, you yeah. start start at the very beginning, yeah. however you want to do it. I got I some mind. notes, do you mind that? No, absolutely not. I don't want to forget stuff, so I've been writing stuff down the last few months. So. I thought we might end up in the pocket. <laughs> so, um, well, here's the thing, and just to give you the broad overview quickly, um, I felt like when I first talked to the investigator, Hale, I, I was shattered. I mean, imagine you see wild crime all the time. Um, so I think he saw a lot of noise, and I, a lot of the stuff I told him, but I don't know how it came across. The last couple of meetings we had, he seemed to think I was a disgruntled ex-boyfriend that got my heart broken, and that was why I was upset. And there was some truth to that, I was upset. But over time, I got some clarity on some things. So I guess I'll just give you my overall impression and, just want to tell you things I saw with my own two eyes that were very suspicious to me that I didn't feel really hurt previously. Or maybe they were hurt and not seen as credible, I don't know. Um, but I, just so you get the context for it, um, as far as the relationship stuff, that sucked. But, you know, that last three, four months I moved on with my life, you know. Actually, her moving away was the best thing that ever happened to me in terms of my personal life. It was a bad relationship. So this isn't out of any animosity towards her for being an unfaithful girlfriend. This is this more deeply concerning stuff about someone getting killed. Um, so I started dating Wendy in fall of 2013. Uh, we had mutual friends, because a lot of our friends are in the Jewish community at the School of Social Works. We have all, we both talked to a lot of the same people, you know, throughout the investigation, like your name came up a couple times. And we just have a lot of like mutual friends and stuff. So that's how we met. So we dated casually in the fall. She just got divorced, so had I actually. And, uh, at the time, I mean, I came in here before, like, I thought Mark Hill was a dick. I mean, that's what I had been taught by Wendy over time. I realized I was kind of misled. Um, but uh, in the fall, it was interesting. I just, let me start. Danny had been <laughs> describing Wendy as a pathological liar and a mentally ill narcissistic sociopath in a semi-joking manner, but... To, to you? To other people. I just okay. heard that through the grapevine. Because I, I, people said, be careful with Wendy. She's a little unbalanced. And I said, well, she seems upset about her divorce, but I don't know if she's unbalanced. I didn't take it seriously at the time. Uh, that sounds extreme, right? I thought these two people were having a nasty divorce. He's calling names. I thought it was totally out of line. It's one of the reasons I was upset with him. Because, you, see, you know, you see in the court documents, I mean, he, was, he got sick of her and really went after her legally in a really aggressive way, and not knowing the background. I thought it was inappropriate, you know, I thought it was taking things too far, trying to disbar your ex-wife, you know. Um, but one impression I'm left with is, I don't think I said this before, like in December or January, I thought that was totally out of line. By May, I don't know if those are technically the correct words, but by May, I knew exactly what he was talking about, and this is a very troubled person, Wendy Abelson, deeply troubled person. Um, and at first, she's gorgeous, she's smart, she's funny. I mean, I fell for this girl like a ton of bricks. Most men would, I mean. Um, that was one reason I stuck around too long. But just an overall impression of her. Um, and Daddy says this in court documents, actually. It's a very manipulative person, a pathological liar. Wendy was an alcoholic while I was with her. She drank her dinner most nights. Extremely fragile, extremely depressed. Mm -hmm. Many, many nights um, sitting in hated Tallahassee so much that I um, thought, thought we're a bunch of country bumpkins and we like Tallahassee because she's from Miami. Didn't hide that fact. Thought it was bizarre that I moved here from Phoenix. And the two conversations that we had every single day for nine months were Danny is an evil monster. Tallahassee is the worst place in the world to live, and I can't believe I got stuck here because of Danny Marco. I and mean, she was obsessed with those two concepts. So I got really tired of hearing that, but I heard that every day for nine months. Um, Wendy's very manipulative in that she plays the victim very, very easily. Whenever we got into a confrontation, she poor me. Very sensitive that I work with 
DV victims, women that have been raped as a social worker, all that kind of stuff. So it's a sensitive Mr. Rogers kind of guy. So it's a very you know easy way to manipulate me or Markel for that matter. Um, but she just wasn't stable even in the fall um, and able to cover it up here or there. When these people, the first 100 hours you spend with her, you think she's amazing. 101 on, you're like, shit, what did I get myself into here? This person's kind of crazy. You talk a little fast for me. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 100 hours? Yeah, first 100 hours you think she's amazing. Uh, then after that, wait a second, there's some tremendous flaws here. So she puts up a very good public face as it's a calm. But as far as seeing stuff pertinent to the crime, I met her brother Charlie when I was down there in Miami for a mockery. You may recall that I said I found him to be a very strange person, mm -hmm. very aggressive. Um, verbally, he takes sex tourism trips to South America to have sex with underage prostitutes. He's wait a minute, back up a second. Yeah, he takes sex tourism trips to South America to have sex with underage prostitutes. Sex tourism. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, South America. Just I'm kind of a sheltered guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was I was shocked not only that he would tell people he did that, but that he would tell his younger sister. That was strange to me. Um, very odd. And there's this odd dynamic between them. The whole family is real weird. He talked in the hot tub about punishing a girl by anally violating her in front of Wendy and I, like bragging about the fact that he'd hurt this girl because she had got him in an uncomfortable situation. So he came off like a, an offender to me. He came off like a, you know, kind of sociopathic, like this is strange. He just met me. He's telling me this. It was really, really weird. Okay, I'm, I, yeah, you, you, you <laughs> yeah, I know, I just, I'm, I'm just trying to rein you in a little yeah, bit ahead, so I can make sure I yeah, get it right. Yeah, yeah, I do recall something about a hot tub, yeah, yeah. And but I think you, uh, it may have been something I read in, from Corey Hale's report. It might have been, yeah, I talked to him. But are you saying you're in the hot tub, the hot tub. after the Immokalee yeah, exactly. uh, retreat? Exactly, we, we went from Immokalee to Miami and hung out with their brother. Not okay, the first so you're in Miami at, at his place, yeah, I guess? Exactly. It's got a, it's very well, he's got a really nice house in Miami Beach area. So Miami Beach, Yeah. okay, so you're there yeah. and you're in the hot tub. Yeah. She's in the hot tub Yeah. and the brother Charlie's in the hot tub. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Charlie's talking about it. Punishing girls through anally violating them in front of his sister is just just is it braggadocious? Yeah, yeah. Like well, she she got him punched out at a wedding. He, he had a Korean girlfriend and brought him as the only white guy to 400 Korean people and just him. Some of the men took offense and he got punched out. Charlie did. Yeah. So the way he handled that was to anally violate her and then brag about it the next day. I mean, it was really really weird. Um, that had happened the day before y'all got in the hot tub. Not, not, not the I just spoke there. Um, it was pretty recent. It wasn't that day, but okay. it was last month, the last couple of weeks, something like that. So he goes, he goes to a Korean wedding yeah. as the only Anglo. Yeah, exactly. And some men took offense because he was a date for one exactly. of the Korean girls that exactly. was at the wedding. Exactly. And he got punched. And he, yeah. and he probably opened his mouth or something. So he says he got sucker punched, but I don't know. Okay, so he gets, and so his way of getting retribution is the girl that brought him to the wedding is to yeah. rape her? Or well, it, it did not rape. It wasn't rape. It was consensual sex. But he was bragging about the fact that he made it hurt a lot and that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. And that was, just and that was anal penetration yeah. he's, he's and, bragging about. And it was 20 minutes after I met him. I got gotcha. you. So I'm just like, this is not normal. This is strange. Guys will talk to their guy friends. Although I've never said anything like that. I would never want to hurt a woman. It's, right. You know, so it's, um, so it just struck me as very, very odd. Um, fast forward to May. Um, we have that incident in the uh, coffee shop that we discussed that Officer Hale and you were, I assume that's uh, one of the reasons you guys were interested in talking to me in the first place. Um, but just to remind you, I just walked into All Saints Coffee and there's my girlfriend with another guy. But that was a big deal in our relationship. And right, because you see her there and she's with this guy and, yeah. and you don't know who the guy is. I'm a, I, if maybe I got that wrong. You knew that she was well, seeing a guy? Well, that's, that's one of the things that concerned me is that she would bring him up from time to time. And there was other signs. I mean, there's, I think, five to ten other men. I was in denial about it in this time period. That's not a crime, obviously. But it was. she's very impulsive, very erratic doesn't think things through, she will do them and then worry about the consequences later. She was remarkably sloppy about cheating on me in terms of, um, well that's what was interesting. Up until about early June, she was covering her tracks pretty well actually. And, uh, 
after that fight, we had a huge, not a huge fight, we had a mild fight about that. And um, things started to get really, really strange. And this is why I think I had a hard time getting across to investigator Hale. Um, so we have that fight. She goes to Portland for a weekend. She comes back. It's now June. And June, I was walking around saying to all my friends, I don't know what what is going on. Something is going on. We had a very frank talk about that and decided to stay together. Uh, she said, it's one guy. He's gone. He literally moved out of the area, as you probably know. So in June, I was walking around saying to my friends, uh, I don't know what's going on. It's just uncanny to think back on it now. I said, I don't know what's going on, but something's going to happen. Like, it feels like there's drum beats. It feels like we're moving towards something. It's really, really strange. I don't know what's going on. Um, and one of the strange things that happened was yeah, we had a trip to California scheduled to see my parents the week that Danny was killed. And in early June, she rescheduled that trip. And I said, what's the problem with the trip? And she says, well, I'm worried we'll get stuck in the airport and we won't be back on Friday. I have to pick up the kids from school. And I said, but we're coming back Thursday night. It's not winter. I'm not going to land on the winter. I would understand. There's no way we're going to get stuck. We can, we can rent a car. We have friends that could babysit. This is strange. Like, what? Did, I said, fine, cancel the trip. Um, and that was going to be in early June? The trip was going to be the, the week that Danny was killed. Oh, okay. That was the trip? 11th to 19th was supposed to be the trip. So we had a trip planned, and she was real, real strange about the fact that we had to reschedule this trip. It just didn't make sense. And I even said, if you just don't want to go because you don't feel comfortable right now, just tell me. That's cool. She goes, no, I have to pick up the kids from school that day. I just have to. I, I don't uh, I don't want to do anything to stop that. You know, I, and she said, I'll miss the kids at that point. I said, okay. A couple of days later, I say, well, she said, but I want to spend that time with you. Just, uh, I was leaving for Tennessee on Friday. And she said, I want to spend that Monday through Thursday with you. I said, great. Uh, what, you want to go to St. Augustine? She loves the beach. She hates Tallahassee. This, again, is just very strange and suspicious to me. When Edison tells me, what I want to do is a staycation. I want to stay home in Tallahassee. I said, you you want to stay in Tallahassee the hottest week of the year? He goes, yeah, we'll go to Tom Brown Park, we'll do this. I said, you, you hate it here. I'm offering to take you away. Why wouldn't you? It was just really strange at the time. I remember saying to my friends, like, when do you want to? People laughed. I said, when do you say she wants to do stay in Tallahassee? Like, she leaves town. I'm sure you know. Every chance she gets, she leaves town. Why would she want to stay? I said, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, I finally managed to convince her to do a trip to St. Augustine. But we had to schedule it so that we were back, um, basically by the time of the shooting. Um, so that was just strange. It just it was peculiar at the time. Um, and she was when we scheduled that trip to St. Augustine. I'm sitting there. She has her calendar open. We had to schedule everything with her. That's just how she was. Um, there was just at the time I can remember sitting in her office trying to schedule this, and there's this weirdness about that weekend. She was we're scheduling other things, no problem. But that weekend, she just was intent on that. That day meant something to me before Danny was shot. Like there's something weird about that week. I don't know what it is, but there's something weird about that week. If we keep going through uh, June, other things I noticed in June that were really crazy. Um, let me back up a yeah, second please, so I get please. this right. Yeah. July 11th through 19th, you're supposed to go to California. Yeah. Leave on the 11th, come back on the 19th. I can look it up for you. It might be 12th to 19th, but it was the week that Danny was shot. Yeah, okay. Was, yeah. So when is she saying, I can't do it? What date What, what date are we talking about when she's telling you, I can't Early do it? Early June. I can pull up the exact Early date. June. Early June, yeah. So you're supposed to go to California with her, just you two. We have plane, plane tickets purchased. She, uh, call, she uh, sat me down, I think it was June 5th or 7th, I will find out for you if you would like. Yeah. And she just said, um, I, I can't do that, and it just didn't make sense. It just didn't make any sense. So she'd already said that that date was those that window of... She said, this is the one week I have to go see your parents. And I 11th said, through the 9th. But that, that, that was in May we booked them. So three different times she canceled 
plans with me in the two or three day period we're getting in shape. Sure. What's, what you're leading to is this is highly suspicious that she needs to be here on the 18th of July. Yeah, just anecdotally, subjectively, whatever it's worth, it was really weird. It was really strange. I know this woman, I know her really well. Um, and there was something at the time with me saying to my friends, what's going on? It's just really, really strange. It's just really This, strange. she'd never done anything like this before? No, she had canceled and recanceled, and she did that all the time. Completely disorganized person. But it usually made sense. She usually had a reason. And usually the reason was something about uh, court with Danny or the, you know, her parents wanted her to come down to South Florida. She, every other time about this, I understood. This time I was completely puzzled. Did it make sense? And it was very, very strange. Okay, so she cancels this trip to California. Did you go anyway? I did no, not. of course you didn't. You were oh, okay. Wish I had. Yeah. <laughs> and so you. So what happens to these plane tickets? Um, her ticket, I have no idea. So you, she bought her own. Yeah, we, should, we got separate plane tickets. As a matter of fact, I don't know that she did buy a plane ticket. Oh. But she told me she did. Same airline. Same so. flight. I can find out where I can send you my reservation because we had a discussion about getting our seats moved together. So I think she probably bought a ticket actually, but I never saw the ticket. And it wasn't discussed any further. I can't recall. Okay, so she so that's the first thing in early June. She says, Jeff, I I got to be back on on that Friday the eighteenth exactly to pick up the kids. I guess that's going to be the first of her week with the kids, maybe? Yeah, she gets the kids back after having, because they went to seven day schedule in the summer. Right. And she's going to miss the kids. I, wanna, I said, well, we'll be back. It's not, I said, if you don't want to go, just tell me I don't want to go. No, I want to go. I just got to be back for the kids. It was a special. Okay, why not adjust the flight or adjust the. I don't know. That, the, well, she had the kids the previous week. This was her one free week. She's also booked all summer. Well, the true? 18th is a Friday. Yeah, it is. Okay, so, you know, going back, backwards. Um, the eleventh would should have been a Thursday. I'm thinking. I could look it up, but uh, it, 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 it just wasn't. She was booked week by week throughout the summer. She doesn't even have any school stuff, right? I mean, I don't know if you're off during that. No, time. I'm. I'm completely off. Um, she has a lot of obligations to her parents. Her parents want her down in Miami every chance she gets. All through this county, there's parents, parents, okay. parents, parents. All right, so, so, so three different three different occasions. This. At the time, it's like, oh, what's going on with the 18th of July or the week of the 18th? What is this? I don't understand what this is. This okay, is so the first thing is the California trip, and it's next. Yes. Then you want to take her to St. Augustine, because you know. Yeah, and she wants to stay, and that's just bizarre. But did you ever make plans to go to St. Augustine? Yeah, so a few, um, a week later, again, we sat in front of the calendar, and it was really strange. There was this hesitancy about that weekend. Um, she says, I'll go to St. Augustine, but we have to be back early on Friday. Early on Friday. Early on Friday. What is early on Friday now? Um, we were going to wake up and come straight back from St. Augustine, so we would have got up at 7, been here by 9 or 10. Okay. I mean, she had to pick up the kids from school until 4. It didn't make sense. Okay. Um, so I, but I, I said fine, and my thing was I was going to drop her off and then drive up to Atlanta. I was going to drop her off and go. Um, so that was just strange. It just stuck in my head. Like what Because your trip, your trip to uh, your friend up in Tennessee... What was the date you were supposed to go? I was supposed to leave at about 10 or 11 a.m. on Friday the 18th. Okay. Because I was supposed to get, the original trip was to go straight to Atlanta, stay the night in Atlanta, then go to Tennessee the next day. So I was supposed to leave here at 10 or 11 and get there at 4 or 5. On Friday afternoon? On Friday afternoon. Yeah. Okay. That changed, um, but that was the original. Plan. No, because you left on Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, I did. All right. Well, let's jump, let's jump to that so I can yeah. fill in this blank. Yeah. Why did you leave on Thursday? We'd had a huge fight in late June. Um, I discovered some other cheating. I was very upset with her. And uh, she had sent me in. We had sort of broken up, basically. Um, but she, she put me on a seven day hold. Oh, yeah. yeah okay, I remember that. Yeah. She sent you an email or yeah, something? Exactly. So the night before, I was so upset. I was just like, fuck this. I'm going. I just wait. I said, get out of town. I was upset. Um, but that's something my friends have said to me that. I've never said this, but my friends have said, Jeff, because sometimes it's hard for me to see this clearly, they can see it more clearly. Jeff, you do realize that if you left Friday at 11 a.m. for Atlanta, what this would have looked like, you would have been in custody. You're really, oh. Okay. 
Now, I'm not saying that, but this is, some of my friends was like a clumsy attempt to take attention off for put it on me. I'm not saying that's true. It sounds a little far flung to me. It sounds a little clumsy to me. But she knew exactly when I was going to leave. I'm a late riser. And she didn't know I changed my plans, obviously. So I'm, I'm glad I changed my plans. I wouldn't blame you guys for being a little more suspicious if you didn't. I mean, if I leave at 11, you just see me driving north right. 10 minutes after Danny's show. So that looks suspicious to a lot of people. I know it makes her sound like a criminal mastermind. It may sound crazy to you, but uh, that's what my friends say. Um, so can I go back to the stuff in June? Just Absolutely. I'm I'm sorry. Sure. You know, I have any questions you want to ask, and I know I talk fast, and I... <laughs> just a little faster you know, than I'm used to. My, my dad's from Boston, so... <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> I'm, an adopted, I'm, an adopt, I'm an adopted Southerner, but I haven't slowed down yet, so... Um, in June, these are just my impressions, but it was five or six times in June, I'm playing with the kids, we had a good family life, terrible romantic relationship because she was cheating me all the time. But I'm home with the kids with her. Nice family life. You at her house out on every time, yeah. With Cameron, exactly off uh, Aqua Ridge Hole, Lane. Yeah, nice house. So four or five times in late June, um, I'm playing with the kids, reading them stories. I was very close to Ben in particular. I spent a lot of time with those children. And I look out of the corner of my eye, and Wendy would be in the kitchen crying for no reason whatsoever. And at the time, what it looked like to me is she's like taking it all in and she looked like she was grieving something. And I would say, what's wrong? And she'd say, nothing's wrong. Or make up some bullshit story. And I never, she lied so much it was hard to know. But uh, in retrospect, it, it makes me worry a lot because it looked like she was wrestling with something. It, it was very, it wasn't suspicious, it was just weird. Um, but in retrospect, it's like, wow, let's assume she knew something was going to happen. That's how a person might react, you know? She made a choice, but... That's late it, June. That's late June. That's late June. So that happened enough times that I talked to my friends about it. Well, what she was talking about in June, relocation to Miami. How terrible it was to be stuck in Tallahassee. Crying, like, I, I got stuck here, I didn't choose this, I can't stand it. Um, and she talked about the fact that the only way she could ever relocate is if something happened to Danny. Now, did she actually say that? Yeah, she did. Yeah. This is the first time you've mentioned that. I don't think so. I think I did invest. I think I did mention that to Investigator Hale. Okay. I think I, think I did. It. Well, no, it wasn't. I had three interviews with Investigator Hale. And okay. The next two was me trying to tell him things like this. And I don't think he was hearing me. Okay. So um, now she didn't say that I killed Danny. Uh, she didn't say that word for word. But it was because uh, I was saying, hey, we're. We're about to like get serious here. Are you going to be here? Because she hated it so much. I need to know what's going to happen. And she's like, well, the only way that, let me give you the context. The only way I could leave is if something happened to Danny. But if that did happen, uh, that would be a tough decision. I would probably need to go back to Miami to be with my parents. So that scenario came from her. But it was a response to a question from me. So I mean, I guess I need to be fair about that one. Sure. But, uh, but it was, uh, and it's true, right? I mean, it, it was. Um, I asked if Danny might move with her. She said she would not be willing to do that. But she was talking about that. She would not be willing to do that? <sighs> no, she did, well, Danny had job offers from all over the country constantly, and she didn't want to live in Houston or St. Louis or things oh. like that. Um, I mean, she was miserable here. She was here just because she came with Danny. She didn't like her job. She didn't like the area. She didn't like split custody. I don't know that people knew how upset she was. Um, I mentioned to you before you came into the room when I said this, but this is the time period. I don't know the exact day. I'm so distracted by relationship stuff, I can't quite remember it. But uh, she told me that Charlie had looked into having Danny killed in the summer of 2013. She meant it dead serious. I wish to God I'd follow up on that at the time, trying to figure out us, and I thought, well, Charlie's crazy. I can imagine that, but certainly he's not crazy enough to do that, so I didn't worry about it. You, you're, that's your interpretation. It's not mine. No, 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 let's back up. Yeah, go ahead. Let's let's get into the context of your conversation with her where that comes up about please, Charlie. Please, So She just, uh, she's talking about Danny. She's completely... Where, where are we at? We're at her house in the living room in late June. In late June, late June of 2013. Yeah, 2014, yeah. I'm sorry, 2014. Yeah, yeah, late June. Um, and you know what, this might have even been... This is sometime between June twentieth and the Monday before Daniel was shot. Okay. And I, 
I want to say it was right before, but I don't trust my memory on that, the, the date. Um, and she's talking about Danny because it's all she ever talked about. And Danny wasn't a human being, he was Satan. Um, he was what? He was Satan. So Satan, yeah. okay. And what was real strange about this was that in January, February, March, they had a lot of court stuff, and I could see why she'd be so pissed off at Danny. Danny had calmed down. He liked his new girlfriend. The judge had read him the right act in court when they went to court the one time and told the other attorney, you need to calm your client down and have, stop having your client write his own legal briefs. I'm sick of reading this crap. <laughs> you know, Danny was going to get his butt handed to him by the court, and Wendy was going to have to concede a couple things, but she was going to win, everybody thought. And he had calmed down. He really had. Um, so I was trying to say, maybe we could talk about Danny a little less. Danny's chill. Danny's happy with Amy. This is good. This is good for us, you know? And I was starting to see Danny a little more uh, realistically at that point. So she's in the middle of all these conversations where she's just ranting and raving about Danny. Very angry with Danny. She's very sensitive. And the worst thing you could do for Wendy is point out that she's not perfect. And that's what Danny represented to her is, he said, you're a liar. You know, things like that. Anyway, she just comes out of the blue and I said, well, I just wish something, I can't remember exactly what I said, but I was like, you know, this isn't going to ever be fixed in the way you want it. This is, you're linked to this man for your life. You know, there's no fix for this, but you have to fix what you think and feel. And she said, well, you know, Charlie did look into having him killed last summer. He said it would cost about $15,000. 15000 That's fair. That's right. It seems cheap to me, but you would know better than I. And it's. Um, I, want, I want to make sure I understand. Yeah, this please, 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 please. So, June. What was the date? Between said? June twentieth and March fourteenth, let's say. I think it's probably two. I think it's closer to uh, July. Between June twentieth and July fourteenth, I think it's closer to July fourteenth. Okay. She yeah. says, "You know." Charlie. Charlie did look into ha Charlie did actually look into having him killed last summer. Last summer. And he f he was told it would cost fifteen thousand dollars. And one of Charlie's. This is just paraphrased, but I want to make sure I yeah, understand. Yeah. Charlie did look into having Danny killed last summer. It would cost about fifteen thousand dollars, and that's not exactly word for word, but that's pretty close to what she said. I wish to God I had followed up, but how do you respond to that? What do you say? I what did you say? I changed the subject to us. I was interested in working our relationship out. She ever bring that up again? No, never again. But what worries me is that the speech pattern, not to be, I'm not trying to play FBI profiler here, but... It's kind of like, a, I told you half a truth instead of half a lie. That's how she lies. That's exactly, I'm sure you've got that a lot in your life. So, uh, it doesn't have the impulse control just to say nothing in high stress situations, but it gives you this half fast version, yeah. Um, so I thought about that a lot. But, but you do remember the amount is 15,000? I do remember that. No further than that, nothing else. There's nothing else. Really? I wish I followed up. I beat myself up about this. Oh, no, you didn't. What am I going to do? Call you guys and say my girlfriend said something crazy? I don't know, you know. Um, no. Um, the thing that worried me about Charlie is he has a very close friend and goes on these trips with them who's ex special forces and is known for being kind of deranged. And, and it's all that guy was done by somebody who knew what they were doing. So I did, I told you guys that. What's his name, though? I never I, got a name. I don't know. I just assumed you guys investigated it. He's a tatted up, uh, I mean, known affectionately as a deranged guy. A guy just didn't come back the same like some of these guys do, unfortunately. Um, but he's a close friend of Charlie's? He's on his Facebook page. That's what I told him to get her help. Okay. Um, when I heard the crime occurred, about 12 hours, I was shocked. And then as I'm driving up by 75, in my head, I was like, holy shit, Charlie did it. And he got that guy, I can't remember his name, to do it. You're saying this guy is on Charlie's Facebook page, or uh, was? Was. These are really smart people. I wouldn't be Facebook friends with them anymore if any of this is true. Um, other thing that happened in June, our relationship isn't doing well. All of a sudden, from nowhere, 
you know, like a five-year-old kid, I'll try to manipulate you in a very transparent way, and it's like obvious what they're doing. She started doing that kind of stuff. I got the sense we weren't going to make it. It was obvious to me, and I didn't never going to trust her again. All of a sudden, she throws me the world. And I thought at the time, I said to my friends, I've been very careful not to develop like a hindsight bias. I've checked back in with my friends. What did I say? They said, you said in June, it felt like Wendy was stringing you along for some reason. And you couldn't figure out why would why didn't she just break up with you. She's like, this ain't going to work, you know. So all of a sudden, um, she's telling me I, I should uh, move in. Move in with her? Yeah, she's talking about moving in. She, and I wanted a family so bad. She knew that. She manipulated me with the kids constantly. Um, she said the kids should start calling you daddy. I'm going to talk to my mom and dad, and I'm not Jewish. That was all day. I'm going to get approved by the parents. I'm going to give you the right. passwords. I'm going to give to all my computer accounts. She started acting like this was going to be a uh, permanent thing. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. I can give you a second. I'm just going to have to respond to this I understand. Right now. I understand. Sweet. I hate it. I hate it. Jeff, I'm confused about this timeline. Yeah, Maybe we should try to get that. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Um, okay, where's this week off? Um, where, where, which, where That's in July. I've been, going, I've, been going, okay. I've, been going, I've been going in order. Okay. So we're still in June right now. Okay, well, so, so we're in, but this comment from late June of the 20th through the July 14th is before or after what you're telling me now. Um, I can't remember exactly. It's my I, fault. You know, it's okay. No, it's not a fault. Thing. I, I don't, I can't remember. I want to be as honest and accurate as I can. Sure. I think that's the Monday before he was shot, but I can't be certain. So this would be preceding that. Preceding. Okay. Preceding okay. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's just, it just felt strange. These are just my impressions. But it's like, what, again, what is going on? It, it just didn't make any sense. It was just really strange, erratic behavior. She wants you to what, though? Um, well, I was threatening to leave at this point. Oh, you know? oh okay, okay. So, um, and I I guess if I'm putting on my cop show hat, I'm wondering if it would have looked weird if you break up with your boyfriend and then a week later someone gets shot. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I don't know. Um, so, get to um, mid to late June. Uh, she went down to South Florida. She came back. I could tell she had cheated on me. I was very upset. It's very obvious. And we went to Gainesville June 27th. She accompanied me down there for a work trip. Okay. 27th? Yeah. That weekend together. Um, I tried to do a thing while she was going back to Miami for two weeks. As soon as we got back, we drive back to Tallahassee. Then she drives down to Miami with her mom. Oh. So that was the, because her mom has to come up to take with her because she's not allowed to go herself. Um, and I didn't, I knew it was the worst time in the world to have a fight. I just finally lost my mind on her. Right? So I, the only reason this is relevant to the investigation is it precedes this sh crime by a couple weeks. I did not touch her. I did not call her names, but I lost my shit on her. I told her exactly how upset I was. I chewed her ass. She decompensated in a way that I've never seen an adult do before. She ended up in the fetal position, sobbing like a three-year-old. Um, this, um, So I was really upset, as you can imagine. I mean, and put me with the kids on Mother's Day and the next day, I was really upset. So anyway, I was pretty angry with her. And you may have seen the email. She actually uh, 
was manipulative enough that I ended up apologizing for that. Because was this on her Gmail account? Yes, yes. There's a lot of... I, 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 other investigators have looked at those, gotcha. um, and so I'd have to figure out yeah, which one. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm just saying, if you see it, it's a little embarrassing. I just didn't know if it was her Gmail account or her work account or yeah. a different account. Yeah. If I want to go back and look at it, I'm going to look at the Gmail Yeah, yeah it's your Gmail. It's on Gmail. Did so she give a reason? Uh, it's deeply important to her. She'd be perceived a certain way. No, did she give a reason why she was having multiple sex partners? Uh, not a good one, no. I mean, she said she... Um, she didn't actually. She said she was very upset by my behavior in Immokalee when we had a two, what you or I would probably consider normal range, uncomfortable conversations for 30 seconds. So I said, like, she said, you were just, I was afraid in Immokalee you were going to be a jerk. I was like, I said, could you please be more considerate to me? That's literally all I said. Um, just she's a hair trigger. I think she, uh, didn't want a boyfriend is my suspicion. I think I was awful helpful with the kids and stuff like that. Okay, I got you. I, yeah, I think she enjoyed using me as her. Okay, let's let's narrow this yeah, down. Yeah. Okay, June twenty seventh. Yeah. You're telling me is the date that you're in Gainesville and you yeah. have this blow up. Yeah, we have a twelve blow up. Okay, so is the comment about Charlie and the fifteen grand after that? It is after that. Okay, so we can narrow it down to the twenty seventh. Yeah. After. You know what? I'm almost. I just want to be as conservative as I can, but I'm almost positive that was July, the Monday before he was shot. If I had to bet money on it, that's where I'd put my money. Okay. So, um, when I was talking to her about that, I was struck by how cold and callous and basically sociopathic she was. Um, here I am, I was crying, I was very upset, and I said, you know, you're not a sociopath, you must feel bad about this on a certain level, and she goes, I don't know if I'm a sociopath, I don't feel bad about any of this. Did she, did, had there ever been a confusion about, you know, okay, um, Jeff, I'll just be in simple, yeah. you know, elementary terms, Jeff loves Wendy, Wendy loves everybody. You see what I'm getting at? Is, no, no, that's what it was. Under, you understood her, to, that she was supposed to be uh, strictly with you? Yeah, just from March on. Before that, I had no I, I knew she. I right. knew what she was doing before that. March on, um, I've been to 50 dinner parties where I'm, I'm introduced as her boyfriend. She took me out in public constantly. Let's continue. Give me a minute here. Yeah. You need something? Uh, if you had a water, I'm yeah. going to dry yeah. mouth. I appreciate it. He's a very interesting guy, and you may have known guys like this. I know some in Tallahassee. He's friends with people on both sides of the tracks. He's got friends that are physicians and professors and all that. He's got guys he hangs out at his gym that don't have a high school diploma, and he's able to buddy up with them, too. He's very good socially. Charlie is street smart. He comes off kind of like a con man. 
he is really good with women. He's one of those con men, women, womanizer types. Different girl every night. Very socially smooth. So he enjoys flowing from one side of society. And from, he has a Ferrari. I mean, he could just hang out in the upper crust. He doesn't. He enjoys slumming with these other guys, you know. So I think he's taking trips with that guy, though. If you're going to look into it, I believe he's part of the crew that like went to South America. I have somebody checking right now to okay. see if if uh, if maybe we're talking about the same person. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, I by the way, Charlie is so industrious and so street smart that if it wasn't that guy, it wouldn't make me any less suspicious that Charlie was involved. He just was the natural first thing that popped into. So, what do you think, Jeff? You you don't okay. So, my, when you first started talking to me today, and don't take this the wrong way, but when you first started talking to me, I thought we were we're fixing to crucify Wendy right here, but as far as everything, and that she was directly involved, not necessarily that she um, killed her husband, ex husband, but had solicited for someone to do it. I still believe that. I, I'm hundred uh, percent. Never say hundred percent. I'm a researcher. I'm, I was 90% sure when I talked to you guys in July, I was waiting for you to catch somebody, because then I was like, maybe I'm crazy, right? So then when Myron May happened, I thought, maybe it was Myron May, you know, I'm just wondering. At this point, um, I'm pretty confident. This is an email that I think you're referring to. I'll give you an opportunity to read it. Yep, that's the one she sent, uh, that's where I'm going right now. Okay, um, so this is July 15th, is that accurate? That's right. Okay, July 15th is the Tuesday before. The, the, the things you told me about Charlie would have been the night before this. Okay, so we are on the 14th. Yeah, I think I think that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah it would have been Monday, July 14th. That's actually just where I was going for right now. Um, Go ahead. So she goes to South Florida for two weeks. We barely talk. It's hard on both of us. You guys have emails. It's bullshit romance stuff going back and forth. Um, we had one long conversation and decided to patch things up. She decided she sounded very calm in this conversation. These are phone conversations? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, she she's in Miami. She's in Miami. And while she's in Miami, she always says, I, you know, she, she would just disappear for 14 days. I wondered if there was another man down in Miami, too. It seemed plausible because her parents take care of the kids. It doesn't make sense how busy she is. Um, come back Monday, we go on a date. That's the 14th. That's the night that. Uh, because you're on the date yeah. here. Yeah, we're on the date here. It was real awkward. Um, and she was a little strange, but it was a, overall a pretty positive date. That's um, on the 14th. It's on the 14th. So that you're, you're, you're having this conversation during or after your date? After the date. Back at her house? Back at her house. Back okay. at her house. Um, yeah, and didn't have wine that night. She was sick. She got back home. She was really stressed out and sick. So the next day is Tuesday the 15th. Um, wake up in the morning. I call Wendy and told investigator hail this. I don't know if there's anything here, but it was kind of bizarre. Talk early in the morning, maybe nine or 10, and I said, I'd like to see you today. I was a little encouraged. Um, and she said, yeah, I'd love to see you. And she'd walked herself out of her house. I said, well, come hang out. She said, I'd love to spend time with you. And then I waited. Three hours later, I get a phone call, and she's like, actually, I got into the house. Let's not do the afternoon. Let's just go to yoga together. So you were? To yoga. Okay. So we went to yoga together. It was awkward as hell. She was cold. She was done, mm -hmm. I can tell. So I'm sitting there at yoga going, okay, this is over. Walk her to her car at the end of yoga, and I say, you know, I love you. I don't know what else to say. And she goes, I know. I was like, well, that's not what I you want. <laughs> so <laughs> I love you. <laughs> and she goes, I know. <laughs> yeah. Of course you do. I'm a goddess. <laughs> We're talking about narcissism. Yeah. Right? So I'm like, I said, I literally went, okay. And I just turned to leave, and this, I told Hale this, but I want to say it again. She goes, hey, Jeff, are you still going to Tennessee on Friday? And I say, I'm thinking, why the hell does she care? Obviously you're walking friends. away, you're separating? Yeah, well, I, I went like 10 paces away from her, and she says, hey, hey, Jeff, Jeff, are you still going to Tennessee on Friday? And I say, I lie. And I say, actually, it's up in the air, because I was. we talked about if we broke up, I should come over and say goodbye to the kids. I was hoping she'd invite me over. And uh, she said, well, who's, she was deeply interested. She asked me three or four questions. But this is after this, right? It is after, no, 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 that's not This is, I get this email at the end of the night. She, gets, she, calls, she goes home and she sends this email. This is after this. This is after the conversation. This, the conversation I'm talking about right now happens an hour before I get this email. An hour before. Okay, so this is we're still Tuesday the 15th? Yeah, at 7 o'clock at night. Okay. Get out of the other. Okay. So she's, she asked three or four questions about under what circumstances would I go? Why am I thinking about not going? She seemed deeply interested in what I'm 
going to do on Friday? It just was bizarre. I, I was like, well, you know, whatever. Um, got home, got this email. What was so strange about this? He had just spent 14 days, 16 days, away from each other, thinking about things. Then I get this. I told her, if you don't want to do this, send me a text and say, I can't do this anymore. Why would you string me along for a week? It's real strange. I just want to make sure that we're on yeah, the same page. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to read this aloud, so... Yeah, yeah. so if, you, if there's something, it pains me to be writing this to you now, but here we go. I need some space to clear my head and to figure out how to move forward. I am heart sick, but my head and my heart are having two different reactions to us being together, and I can't reconcile them to be in this like you would want me to be. So she's saying you're coming on too strong, basically, is what, is what I'm reading. You, you, you want a full commitment. No, that's not how I read it, but I mean, it's... Well, I mean, that's how I'm looking at it. Is yeah. that not true? I mean, is... Okay, do you want a full commitment from her? I, I wanted to continue the relationship, yes. Okay. Um, but but we had discussed just breaking up. Uh, we just spent 16 days apart thinking about things. Right, you're 16 days apart. Then you go on a date on the 14th. She makes the comment about her brother was going to kill... Well, looked into killing Danny the previous summer, which would have been summer of 2013. 13. She didn't specify a month. You didn't question her any more about that. She I was too focused on this stuff. Yeah, I didn't. No, you make the, when she's making this statement on the four. Uh, you're saying the Monday. Yeah. Which would be the 14th. Yeah. Uh, the, when she, when she makes this statement that that Charlie had looked into having someone do this for 15, it was going to cost. Hey, how much does it cost to kill this guy? And the answer that Charlie gets is fifteen thousand. He shares that with his sister. Yes. Okay. And then she says that to you, and that was in the context preceding the preceding that conversation was basically, what do you want to do? You don't like it here. I'm talking in your you know that was part of the con it was a constant conversation. Like, Danny is awful. Tallahassee sucks. That's about all she ever said. And I can't do anything. I, I'm stuck here because um, well, I guess she got denied relocating with the kids, she and she's saying I'm stuck here unless something happens to Danny what you're getting at. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm getting at. And then, and then she just spills this out. Yeah. And then I think, by the way, she just went to the bathroom. I think there was something like that. Where like but you're saying that, I mean, there was no more conversation about This is huge to me. This, this, is, this is like, my brother's already checked into it, and it costs I, this much. Yeah, I could is it like this is still available and open, or 15 grand is too much for, we're too cheap? This family's rich. I mean, that's nothing. No, I know, but what's that petty cash in his office? Okay, but, um, but but was this like this this option still available? Is that how it was? It was just said in passing, and I've molded over in my head a hundred times. I didn't know what it meant. Okay, so my brother checked into it, and it was going to cost. Um, 15 grand. I'm just heartbroken in this situation. I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about how do I get this woman back? I, I, I realize, but I'm trying to I'm trying to glean this yeah. from what the what yeah. the interpretation that you got from it. Yeah. Um, I know you told me you didn't ask her anything yeah. more about it. I mean, you know, a, a statement like this. Don't take this the wrong way, but if if I was in your shoes, I'd be like. I'd be, I'd be saying, what the hell are you talking about? I got used to her craziness. That's okay. I mean, all she's right. all over the place all the time. So I think I just wrote it off as another crazy thing. Wendy says, you but know, you recall the amount. I do, and I told. So I went back to a couple friends because I told them about this right. after Danny got shot. I said, holy shit, you right. know? I mean, that's what happened. Um, so I beat myself up about that. No, no, no. I don't want you to beat yourself yeah. up. I just want to make sure that you didn't. I'm just trying to get you to see. It, is there anything else that you can recall? I'm not saying I'm not saying you did anything wrong. I know I get that. I'm saying, are you sure you didn't miss something else in that conversation? No, because that was right back to her and I. Okay. All right. Since you're going to be here, and that's not going to happen, you know that. So this co this comment is made in passing as she's traipsing off to the something bathroom. Like, yeah, or the bedroom or something. Comes back out. It's all and okay. I, and I, say, I had a good time last night or something like that. You okay. Know, it was that kind of thing. Um, so she sends me this email. And uh, I don't know if it's coming on. I don't know what to make of it. I've sent it to some of my friends who know her pretty well. And said she's crazy, is what they said. I mean, why wouldn't she just break up with you? It doesn't even make sense. I should have broke up with her. Um, but it, we've been get apart 16 days. She wants another week. It, uh, but recall that when she left Danny, she just moved out while it was gone. So confrontation isn't her thing, you know. Um, so maybe that's why. Um, 
So uh, Wednesday goes by. There's Thursday. Thursday, she... Um, You're still up in the air about leaving. You've told her, I, I don't know for sure if I'm leaving Friday or not. That's right. Um, she doesn't know for sure. I don't know if she would have or would have known. We have met mutual friends that I told on Wednesday or Thursday that I was going, that it wouldn't shock me if she were able to find out that I was going. I mean, we have mutual friends. But your answer to her was, I don't know you. That, still that, that's right, that's right. But the next day I decided to go. Um, so it was all oh, Wednesday. Yeah, I decided to go for sure on Wednesday. Thursday, she changes her Facebook picture. I'm sure you've seen the picture of her in the beautiful purple dress. It's all over the media. It was suspicious to me after the fact that that picture was changed 12 hours before Danny shot, and that's the picture that was distributed to the media. She's very concerned with her appearance and how she looks. So uh, I know that maybe sounds crazy, and Mr. Gary Hill seemed to think it was, but I, I thought, this is so strange. She changed her Facebook picture twice in two years, and the night before Danny shot, and she's going to be all over the media, she looks like a Victoria's Secret model, you know? Okay. So, um, but I was bothered enough by that picture, because it... What was the prior picture? Something that looks more like a 35 year old woman with two kids would have on her Facebook page. Okay. Um, all the other pictures, and she looks pretty enough, but that one looks, I mean... She looks amazing in that picture. Um, okay. She's not even that pretty wrong. <laughs> that picture, I think her, oh, dad, Photoshop. her dad photoshops that stuff. He does that kind of thing. So it was a picture produced for her by her father, I believe. Um, so Friday I leave. Uh, Thursday night I leave. After I, about an hour after I saw that picture, I, I said, fuck this. And I just drove out of town. Um, the next day, Danny shot at 11 a.m. No one contacts me, which we have a lot of mutual friends, and they didn't. I talked to some of them after the fact. They tell me that they were under the impression that I was a very likely an actual suspect in this case. Um, I posted on Facebook from Tennessee Friday night at a time where it would have been impossible for me to ever have been here at the time of the shooting. Um, she didn't contact me for 10 days. She told me that the police had instructed her that I was a suspect and she was not to return a text message that I sent her. Mm. That she would, could not do that. Uh, I actually recently dated a criminal defense attorney just coincidentally and she thought that was bizarre because she said they want you talking, you want to incriminate yourself, they're going to get access to this stuff. But That didn't come from me. I don't think, well, I don't think it came from anyone. It was very strange. Um, well, I know legally you can't do that probably, but uh, no. I mean, it's you know, why would you want to? Um, so, so I, I wasn't in the room with her. I don't know how she acted or whatever, but it was implausible that I did this. And I don't know if she, she told me she tried, I tried to protect you from the police. They want to know where your house was. They want to know this. I said, I don't need protecting. How come none of your friends called me or texted me? Well, they told me later that she seemed to be concerned that I actually did this. Why would you do it? Fuck if I know. Why would I do it? Well, what did she say? Well, Crime of passion. We're breaking up and Jeff's upset. I mean, so I don't know if she said that to you guys. I know you can't tell me that. But she was telling people in her social circle, apparently, that there was, that they shouldn't contact me, I guess. That, you know, this was, this was really a possibility. And that just seems deeply suspicious to me. Um, a lot of these people aren't really close friends with me, but... I found out about this crime third hand, and that just struck me as incredibly strange um, and suspicious, very suspicious. I just got a couple other things, and then I'll answer the questions we have. I called Officer Hale and said, hey, just so you know, uh, Wendy has a key to that house on Trescott, so I know there was some, some mystery and discussion and speculation, how'd the guy get in, or I don't know, the crime scene was in details, but Wendy's constantly losing keys. So, and, re and rediscovering them, you know, all the time. Right. So she had keys. I, he didn't call me back on that, and I don't know if it was helpful or not. And then here's just a list of strange things that she said after the crime. She, uh, I talked to her three or four times. She said, I love Tallahassee. I wanted to remain in Tallahassee for the rest of my life. These are phone conversations? Yeah, these are phone conversations. Danny has so many enemies, it will be impossible to figure out who did this pretty beloved man and he was an abrasive guy but that's a strange thing to say. Um, I've never heard any sympathy from her one time about Danny. She still seems enraged, obsessed and defiant about Danny. Um, I told Officer Hale that her and 
Charlie went to dinner maybe three weeks after the crime. Charlie called it a celebration dinner via text. She puked on the table during the dinner after Charlie said something. She wouldn't tell me what he said. She said Charlie made a remark and I just puked everywhere. Celebration dinner? That's what Charlie called it. You can look up, if you have access to text, you can find out. Yeah, that's what she called it. Um, she said the kids are having problems, but not because of Danny's murder. So the kids are peeing the bed and having natural kid stuff, not because of Danny's murder. That's a really weird thing to say. Most people would say they're upset because their father just got uh, killed. It seems to be important to her that it not be because of that. She was very upset that I attended Danny's memorial service. When the Tallahassee Democrat ran the story, they put, <laughs> almost a better word, it's not even front of center picture of Jeff O'Cats. Uh -huh. <laughs> Go through all that in my head, I come to the conclusion, as you said a minute ago, that she was at least aware this was going to happen, and I think probably involved in it. Still trying to get that photograph. I don't know if it's still going to be on his Facebook page or not. I just want to see if I just want to confirm this is the individual. I think I'd recognize it if I saw it. Um, at least a, it was the same photograph I saw. Yeah. The photograph I recall was four guys like this. Okay. Okay. All right. I got the men that you're talking about. Um. She made, well, first of all, what, does she still have the same phone number? She switched her phone three or four days after the shooting because she thought you guys had bugged it. <laughs> okay. All right, do you, do you have the new number? I don't. I, don't, I think she has the same number. She has a, she has a different phone. She just wants oh, to Oh, different. Hands up. silly because they want to. You don't need to put a bug on a phone physically. Right. I, mean, I mean, it's funny. Um, Why would she be concerned about people bugging her phone, or the police bugging her phone, I guess, is what she's specifically concerned about. She's real concerned about that. She told me that. Did you ask why? No, I knew she I immediately thought she did this, and so she told me 50 times, Jeff, I had nothing to do with this. And I always just let it be silent, sorry. I just let it be silent, because I didn't want to go there. I didn't want to play my hand. I never said anything to her. I just wanted to listen. I was hoping she might give me something interesting and I would come tell you guys. Because she's erratic enough, I thought she might say something stupid. She must have said 50 times, I had nothing to do with this. And you saw her statement in the press. She's worried for the safety of her and her children. No one's, position, no one's suggesting a serial killer look, looking for Jewish lawyers, you know? I mean, this was pretty targeted, so. Yeah, you think, um, well, she, well, she's concerned for her children's safety. Wendy plays the victim so well. To me, it looked like classic Wendy. Everybody else felt bad for her. I thought, holy crap, mm. she did this. She plays the victim instantly. She's great at it. And those names I give you, I mean, that's so you can be, you have all the data I have. Wendy with Charlie. I don't know who pulls the trigger, but there's a very strange relationship between those two. Yeah. I acknowledge this might all sound real crazy to you, Mr. Gary. How's that? No. Yeah. Well, I'm very interested in this. Yeah. Um, I just I want to make sure that I understand it yeah. completely and thoroughly. Yeah. Um, and I can see that it's been weighing on you heavily. Well, it has, because it sounds crazy to people, obviously. Although I've told a couple people the whole story, like I told it to you start to finish, and no one else has said I'm crazy. My therapist said, one thing I forgot to tell you, I had to go get a damn therapist, it was so crazy. I, I would. <laughs> so I, I tried to manage her, I tried to get some advice on relationships, and in April, 
of 2014, he tells me, look, he's real blunt, and I'm going to be honest with you, there's two possibilities. One is um, she's just getting over a divorce and drinking too much and she'll settle down over time, maybe live halfway over after. Second option, she sounds an awful lot like a sociopath to me. That's an objective person. Right. And I said, sociopath? I said, yeah, a high functioning, but she doesn't seem to have a conscience. And I said, oh, Jesus, what have I got myself into? Because I was in love with her and I wasn't going to leave at that point. But th that's the kind of feedback I've got when I tell people what she's actually like. I prefer that you guys catch somebody else, obviously. Right, 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 right. When's the last time you talked to her or had any conversation? I could find it for you. It would have been in uh, around August 20th. Oh, that long ago? Yeah. She cut off all contact because I didn't tell her I was dating. It was just bizarre. That was the time, it was about the time of commencement, summer semester com commencement. There's another thing as far as narcissism and a crazy person. You know what Wendy was mostly upset about? And she told me this. The fact that she had to cancel her commencement speech because Danny was shot. Um, her attorney said it's a bad idea to get yourself in front of the media like that. Inside additional show up, you, you can't do it. She was devastated. Hmm. Um, it's bizarre. Um, I went back and looked. Apparently, you all have somebody, McPherson. Jay McPherson. Yeah. What's the relationship? Is, is she's, She has something to do with Wendy? She was... They claimed that she was in the room with Wendy the nine hours you guys interviewed Wendy. Um, oh, she came up here. She was not in the room with her. Wendy told me she was in the room. Well, okay. Let me, let me, let yeah. me correct that. That sounded weird to me. She came in the room. I think it was over the children. The children had to be picked up. Gotcha. And there was two ladies that were up here, and I can't remember if that was McPherson or not. Well, she, Jane was with her that day, and Jane's, coincidentally, Jane's a, one of my doctoral students in our program. So she's getting her PhD in social work. I teach in social work, so I know her professionally. Right. Um, Jane is the one I talked to for about three hours, maybe two weeks after the crime. They told me that Wendy and her circle of friends thought I did this. Jane told you that? Jane told me that. She said you had to be there if you were, and she basically made it sound like if you, and she's a confidant of Wendy. Um, but Jane uh, knows Wendy as well as anybody. Uh, Jane doesn't think any of this. Um, but Wendy's pretty good at fooling people. Um, although some of this information is publicly available, I should I should add. Like she's a Truman scholar. If you, yeah. go, if you go on the web and look at her statement, she says, "I hate Tallahassee. You're a bunch of country bumpkins." That's basically what she says. You know. Although I think she told a lot of the locals what they that she was satisfied, she wanted to make the best of things, and that she she actually no, that is what she said. But not when the door closed and it was just me and her in the yeah. house. That was, I mean, I got tired of listening to it. I think it's a great place. I deliberately moved back here. I couldn't went anywhere. I mean, so. But um, it wasn't for her, and she made that clear to you. Is what you're saying on a daily. Basis. You couldn't put to a movie theater without hearing about how the movie theater in Miami is better. Okay. She was obsessed with it. You know, her and Danny thought they'd be here a semester. I got stuck here. So. And then he, and then, and, and all she'd been wanting to do is get back to South Florida. And she made that quite clear to you. Quite, I mean, it was kind of cold, actually. She basically told me, if it's between you and South Florida, I'm going to South Florida. Okay. trying to think if there's anything else. So there's just some sick dynamics where Wendy at one point told me that dad was extremely violent. And I thought, well, this makes sense why you're so gun shy and, you know, hair trigger. And then later I said, well, you know, with your history of family violence, she said, I never said that. that I never, so there was a lot of inconsistencies in line, but uh, I, I don't think Charlie's been up here. If you were, with your experience and instincts, you were to talk to Charlie, I assure you, something off about that guy. What about this FBI we, I heard through the grapevine that the FBI talked to Rob up in New York. That's what, that's what Wendy told you? No, I think that's what Jane McPherson told me. Okay. So, and I try not to believe everything I hear because misinformation is everywhere. You know? Well, if Jane McPherson heard it, she most likely got it from Wendy. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, that's true. true. But he's like an outside 
he's not really a part of the core family. They don't have a relationship, basically. Okay. And he, the impression is he's a guy who uh, wants nothing to do with his family. There's something that happened in that house, and he wants nothing to do with it. Okay. And I just think there's, uh, I mean, that's the other theory, which will sound super crazy, but the people that have visited the house in Miami said to me, uh, does anyone consider maybe the whole family is in on this? I mean, this is a fa I said, people don't do that. I said, well, you go in that house, it's real strange in there. It's real secretive. It's real weird. Have you met her parents? I have. Is there anything that you can tell me about them? Uh, everyone in that family suffers from a severe lack of empathy for other people. Okay. She learned that somewhere. You know, pillars of the community. You get on his website. I mean, you know, years ago I went on it. Um, he was polite to me, but uh, dad's polite. Mom's kind of rude, actually. Um, I know that father has been speculated about. Um, they hate Danny in a way. I have a wife. I've I've been through a divorce. I get life. I've never seen this kind of obsession. Like their hobby is hating Danny. Mm. <laughs> it was like really strange. I mean, and I fell under this because Wendy could convince you of it, and maybe she convinced the parents. But uh, they were going to put a. You, you said you, you looked at some emails, but not others. At one point, Wendy was going to get a restraining order against Danny, which, in retrospect, is bizarre because he was a good dad. But she had Gary. You know who Gary is. Gary is a lawyer that he's the one that offered Wendy the job so she could relocate in the summer of 2013. He, he runs a tort firm suing drug companies. He offered her a million dollar job, and I wondered about him too. It's not sexual, it's more of a mother, a father daughter thing, but they're close. Gary. I don't know his last name. Where does he work? He's a lawyer. Um, he works in Miami. Okay. He runs a tort firm, and uh, there are emails. I mean, she sent this document, and she had compiled every email like between Danny and Wendy for like a year and a half. And the idea was to make this legal case that Danny is harassing her and stalking her. She always goes to this. She told me Danny was a stalker because he looked out the window one time and saw her walking down the street without the kids. And he goes, where are my kids? I have right of first refusal. If you don't have the kids, I should have the kids. Wendy claimed that was stalking because he said that. You know. So anyway, all these emails. And the idea was we're going to persuade some judge that Danny needs to be reined in. I read this document, and at this point I'm a little skeptical because she's screwing everybody else. And I said, this is an indictment of Wendy Adelson's character. You read this thing, you get the impression this woman is a total moon, you know? It was interesting because she thought, it, like, from her point of view, it showed what an asshole Danny was. If you were to read this, it's like, this person is crazy. So that was when I started to figure that out. But there's, uh, there's that different perception. At first she seems really together, and then loses her mind. So my worry is that she had something to do with this. And uh, has no conscience. And it's hard for me to believe she could, uh, I know you can't give a polygraph, I can't believe she'd pass a polygraph, I can't believe she would stand up to repeated questioning if you guys had any leverage. I understand that this was done in a smarter way, it's hard, I don't have any leverage. But uh, my experience with her was over time, she just collapses, you know. But if the, the question is, did he threaten Danny? No. If the question is, was he pathologically upset with Danny in a way I found disturbing and it put me off and it was different than, say, even Wendy or her mom? Yes. Incredibly intense about it. Incredibly intense. Charlie's so difficult to get along with, he doesn't have one dental office. He works at five dental offices, and they can only handle him one day a week in each office. Really? He, yeah. And he seems to know this and strategize it. He figured out how to make it work for him, but he's, he was a special ed kid, I believe. He was very difficult to get along with. And he is fiercely protective of Wendy. Okay. 
he had suggested seriously that they convert to Islam. The whole family? Just Wendy and the kids. Islam? Islam or Christianity, one or the other. Just to screw with Danny. So they're not very devout in their No, no, Jewish they're, 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 athe they're atheistic Jews. Pardon? They're atheistic Jews, you know, Jews that don't really believe in God. They yeah. do it culturally, they eat the food. These people don't have ethics or morals. I mean, they don't. Okay. The immediately after the homicide, um, you came. You came back. I, I know. I'm, I'm with that. Yeah. And then you reached out to Wendy, or she contacted you. Ten days later, she texted a mutual friend, say, acting as if I would be upset with her. Right. And I said, "Tell her to call me." She did. At three in the morning, she wasn't sleeping well. Um, and we had a very awkward conversation. Mostly just, I, I think literally she talked for an hour and a half and I said probably 30 words. I just listened mostly. It was real, she wasn't sleeping. It was real crazy. Um, but that's where she told me a lot of things that weren't true. I mean, she was, and I could just be a relationship thing. I mean, she just, yeah, I couldn't contact you until Jimmy Judkins talked to the, to you, right. I believe. Um, and I, I, I don't know. I thought it was really strange not to, uh, all my friends were texting with her. And she wasn't writing a lot back, but everyone else she acknowledged. If I think of anything, I'll, I'll get back in. I actually had a, two quick questions for you, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, this is completely selfish, but I'm concerned about me in this situation. I'm wondering how long it is, in your opinion, before the media, before journalists are poking around looking at this case. And I'm worried about my potential exposure as a professor and as a person. This is, this is an open case. I don't, uh, they can ask all they want to. They can, they're not getting anything. Okay. That's for the foreseeable. I mean, I may call you. I mean, you, at, at, at some day, you may be called as some type of witness. I would do it in a second. Yeah. Okay, I want to make sure that we're upfront about this. I mean, this let's say it goes from here to an arrest to a prosecution, I'm there. and I'm for there. some reason, you know, your your testimony is needed. I would yeah. say anything I said today under oath. I would. Okay. So that's easy. All right, uh, but as far as anything prior to, um, you know, any of that anything that you're telling me, if if for some reason that was uh, you know leaked to the press or anything like that. Um, then I got an arrest to make of somebody else, no matter who it is. I got you. Okay. I got you. Should not be. I should not other be email I sent him, I pretty much accused her. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. But I mean, obviously, you sus it's more than that. I mean, yeah, you more than just suspect her no, at this point. That's so what you've been telling me after this afternoon, true. right? No, that's true. That's what I've basically uh, gotten from you is it's not this woman is directly involved. She is. Now, she, I don't think you're saying necessarily that she. Uh, killed her husband, ex-husband, no. but she, she either had something to do with orchestrating it or had knowledge that it was going to happen. You're, that's the whole point about I have to be back on the 18th, right? No, no. Give you a thumbs up and then uh, and know what's going to happen. There's something weird about that date. So I don't think she, or, she doesn't have the skill to orchestrate it, but Charlie does. So that's quite, and I'm... I but you on left on Thursday... And your last conversation with her was on Wednesday. And my last conversation with her was on Tuesday. An hour before that email where she says, look, I need a week. No, on the email she says she needs a week. Yeah. The, the, uh, the, an hour before she sends the email, she says, are you still in town on exactly, Friday? That's exactly right. And you said, I don't know, it's still up in the air. Yeah. But she, but you did not, she did not ask you to stay in town. No, she did. But like the next day, I see Jane McPherson at work. And maybe, you know, there's all kinds of possibilities. So okay. she would have found out I was leaving. Do you have any suggestions if I'm a, I, can, I know they're doing a dateline on the frosh guy that killed his wife out in Thomasville and they already came to town. Any just advice for being an experienced investigator what I should do if I'm approached by the media because it's not unimaginable. Go talk there. to Investigator Rice. Okay. How simple is that? That's easy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, don't, don't, you don't have to say yes, no, nothing. Um, you're a U.S. citizen. You don't have, you, there's nothing that, yes, they have First Amendment in their favor, but that doesn't mean you have to say a thing. No, I appreciate that, yeah. but I just I watched Dateline enough that I I can just imagine that me being presented with these pseudo suspects. That's how they do it, you know. They show oh, nah. There's uh, that's mm, that would be. Uh, I don't think they're going to do that. There, there, there are a lot of uh, that could be libel a lot. I mean, 
I don't have you listed as anything yeah. at this point. Okay. okay, so no, you don't you shouldn't have to worry about that.